Welcome to another episode of the Cigar Lounge Cigar Talk Show. I am Aaron Paletta, and I'm joined with John Nicaragua Hunter. <laughs> and today we have a Nicaraguan special, the AVO Synchro Nicaraguan. And I, I'm a huge fan of this one. Not this size, but I'm a huge fan of this particular cigar. What's wrong with this size? I like longer cigars. You know that. This size, actually, though, considering I already had one earlier, this size is perfect for tonight. These are the size that I prefer, I, mainly because I don't have three hours to sit still. You, you say you don't have three hours to sit still, and muffins can actually vouch for that. How many times we sit in the Oasis, you come down, and you're constantly going like this, and all you have to do is go home to the warden? Not always. You're a liar. Time is oh, you're, money. You're just going to crack right into it? Hell I guess yeah. we're just going to crack right into them. When I walked in and seen this is what was sitting here, I was like, all right, I'm good. I'm ready for it. I love the sound that thing makes. Ding. Just couldn't wait, could you? No, no. I got here today and really was excited for this one. I almost, I'm telling you, I almost pulled out that 858. It was on the list. I like that 858 though. The, eight, the 858 is good. I mean, I don't know. Today, it was a Nicaraguan kind of day. Yeah, you can ju you can justify that as well. How many days have we sat down and you're thinking Dominican, and then you sit down, and you're like, no, you know what? This is a Nicaraguan day. You just need something with a little more, um, a little more heft. Yeah, it definitely depends on the vibe of the day. I think because that uh, Dominican tobacco is a little bit sweeter, and the Nicaraguan it is. is a little bit bolder. So it just depends on the mood. That is true. I, I mean, you can't. You, in my opinion, I mean, you can't go wrong with Nicaraguans. I'm a, I'm a fan of the Nicaraguans anyway. Yeah. I have to be in the mood for the Dominican. That's like a sunny, hot day, and you're just yeah. chilling outside. And how many times did we talk about that? You get them hot days, you don't want that Nicaragua because it's just it's too much. Yeah. Well, it definitely ain't a hot day today. <laughs> no, it's cold as hell today. Matter of fact, tomorrow is going to be even worse. Yeah. I Sorry. think it's, what, 15 degrees? Something like that. 14, 15 degrees. Tomorrow will be negative 6 at night. Move to PA. What are you shaking your head for? You did move to PA. People in Alaska are like, that's it? <laughs> move, move to PA, he said. It'll be fun, he said. Negative fucking 6 degrees. But it is fun, isn't it? It's aight. Hey, you know what? You don't like it? Get the fuck out of here and go back to Vegas. Fuck that. <laughs> anyway, down to the AVO. How many AVOs have you had? Uh, I've had this one. I've had the... No shit. Uh, can't even think of the other ones. I've, I've, I've had like three different ones. All this size, though. There's a definite flavor difference between this and the... Which ones do we... Did we split that box up? Those were six by sixties, I think. They were bigger than this. Uh, I don't know if they were sixties. You don't fuck they're, me. They are box press though, so maybe they're sixties. Fuck me running. I have one with me. Oh. Look at that. That's a six by sixty. But I'm all, I mean, <clears throat> I'm a big fan in that these are box press. Look what else I, I brought to show you. Oh, thank you. Now get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> Uh, special thanks to John over at Union Cigar in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. He hooked me up with them. You know, we went down there before that snowstorm came in. I'm watching the weather the whole time we're there. Have another buddy who he knows, and in behind the scenes footage called him crazy when we were out in Zizix, California. Um, so we're out there. He's, he's moving here. Another Vegas guy. Moving yeah, you were telling me about him. He, um, so we go down there, his, uh, his wife, Tanya, got a new job, I think, in York. So 
he called me up and he's like, hey, can you go down and help them look for houses? I'm thinking, oh, what the fuck am I going to do? Help for houses? It ain't my house. So I, I don't know what they want, but I helped, you know, look for, like, the leaks and, like, just yeah. the bad shit. Before I went down, I looked for the lodge down. I'm like, all right, I'm going down Friday, Saturday. I'm leaving Sunday. I know I'm not going to get into a meeting. I call the day before I left the secretary of that lodge, which I think is the Good Samaritan Lodge is what it's called, uh, gets a hold of me. Come to find out he's a cop full time. He bought the cigar shop in the heart of Gettysburg. The lodge was right across the street. How freaking convenient. How convenient, right? So we need to go to Gettysburg. And here's an interesting fact. They had a meeting three days after the Gettysburg War. Oh, yeah? Anyone who was left alive went. thought that was pretty interesting. Nifty. I bet uh, yeah. you that lodge was something to see. It was. It actually was something to see. A lot of history. You could feel it when you walked in. That's like that, the Jerusalem Lodge we went to. That one's the oldest one in Ohio. Yeah. You could tell when yeah. you walked in the door. <laughs> Yeah, you can definitely We'll take tell. you one of these days as well. Anyway, I want to get down to this cigar here because I'm actually a huge fan of this cigar. So I got my review that's pulled up. And all my reviews you can check out on lavegalounge.com. Well, not, not all my reviews. Most of my reviews that I decided to type out which actually I brought OG today, so we'll be going through a couple of sticks in there. Um, Ritmo, what was that blue label one? Do you remember? I think Ritmo is correct, but it's it's been so long now Dude, I can't remember. Smoked too many cigars. Uh, honestly, <laughs> um, no. When you introduced me to the Synchro Nicaraguan. Uh, that was it for me. Like, I fell in love. Like, I, I certainly would love to try some of the it other Avos, but this one is, is a... There it is. Yeah, it's a special <laughs> place in my heart for sure. Yeah, well, there's another one coming up in this season that has a special place in all of our hearts, and that's the... Uh, I'm going to uh, say right, which wait, one. Wait, wait, we have a good lineup no, no, this year. No, let's, let's keep that one a, a bit of a surprise. Because it's, it's... I would like to get the man who made it on this show Yeah. as, as well. Or at least a representative. Well, actually, you know, I've met a couple of the reps, and they're they're quite nice. Like Tracy was an awesome person. Max seems cool as hell. Um, his personal uh, executive assistant, dude, she was fantastic. Um, I can't I can't even pronounce this one, the Uvizian or something like that, but it's the orange label. Had that one. So, random fun fact um, here, uh, not to be one of those actually guys, but. Uh, you guys refer to it as the AVO. It's actually AVO. It is AVO. His so, name is AVO. So that what you were just trying to pronounce, U- Uvesian or Uzevian, something like that? I think that, that's his last that's name. That's his last name. His name is AVO Uvesian or something like that. Oh, my. Yeah. Dude, I mean, tons in here. You can't even find this shit. You remember reading off the top or the new releases <clears throat> Yeah, last I do. Year? Why do you think I switched you and gave you 2020s? Yeah. Purposely switched them because it had, I knew it had shit you couldn't pronounce. Synchro Ritmo South American 30th was that one. That's another one. Yeah. I don't remember much about that one. I remember uh, enjoying it. Man, I th- this is why I keep a book. I gave it a 90. Can't read my own writing right now. That'll take forever. Anyway, so I've had three different kinds of. Avos. And I've seen quite a few out there I think might be worth picking up and mm-hmm. trying. There was one floating around Instagram. I can't remember what the hell it is right now, but it looked pretty damn tasty. Anyway, this one. This was given a 93 and ranked 16 by Cigar Aficionado Magazine in 2015. Um, I even put in my, my review here, just so everybody understands, I do not research these cigars until after I smoke them. I, I don't want... What we call that? Biased. I don't yeah. want to be biased about it. I want to give an honest one. Yeah. That's why reviewing that uh, that 2020 number one was very difficult because I, f- I bought it, but then I found out it went number one. That was hard to, re- to review that one. You want to? What's in it? Cause I know I'm I think everybody could guess what's in it. Well, that's I don't, not, I don't that's even... not all that's in it. Hey, what if? Nicaragua. Did I say it right? <laughs> Close enough? Anyway? I mean, not my point. My point was just like, what if you got newbies watching the show? They might want to know what's in it. 
It's the because there's quite a bit. Alo Nicaragua. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never be able to say that word ever. It's okay. We love it. They love it. I love hearing you fuck it up. Listen, my question though is, how can you be a Masonic guide and memorize paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of literature, but you can't say Nicaragua? <coughs> That's a question that I don't have an answer for. <laughs> it's okay. I love hearing it. And he actually doesn't do it like like intentionally. Like, I'm going to intentionally say this incorrectly. He just can't I'll say, say it. it. I'll say it three different ways, trying to say it the right way. I don't know why that's like probably one of the few words that I'd, I've literally tried saying it over and over and over again hey, to get Johnny, it right. Quick, 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 uh, like pop quiz. Can you say the word cinnamon? Cinnamon. How do you say cinnamon right, but you can't say Nicaragua? Syllabling. Can you say that? Syllabling. No, what? Syllabling. Syllabling? Yeah. Syllabling? No. I think a lot of that has to do with my teeth. We'll see when he gets his teeth. With the th in the s. You thinking of more words to give him? No, my I'm just and my S's since I've had my teeth pulled have been fucked up since. Just trying to figure out how his teeth plays into Nicaragua. Uh, no, that, I just can't say it. That's just fucked up on it. Well, don't try anymore because we want you to keep screwing it up. <laughs> anyway, you want to say what else is in this or am I going to say it? Uh, Dominican Republic and uh, but tobacco but, from but tell Peru. Them, but tell them what it is, though. It's a Dominican binder. It's a, yeah, Dominican and long Republic. Fillers. It's a, an Ecuadorian wrapper, and it, the filler is Nicaraguan, <laughs> Dominican Republic, and tobacco from Peru. He's right. The Nicaraguan, I am a huge fan of, of that tobacco. But then again, I just had one the other day by Alec Bradley. i got to pull this thing up. Shocking, I, Alec I was, Bradley here. I was not a <laughs> fan of it. Oh, yeah? Took everything I had to finish it. Is that the one from the sampler? Yeah. Oh, it shit. Irritated the hell out of me because, like, I had high hopes for it. That thing looked fancy as It well. was the fine and rare. That's why. It's a fancy-ass label. So are my Opus ones, but I love them. Not that. They're not that bold. I mean, the Opus label is famous for what it is, but it's not... I think the crazy elaborate. The Opus label. The Opus label is elaborate. I think it's more gaudy. Whereas this label is what's the word I'm looking for? E elegant, I guess. The color scheme is an elegant color scheme. Uh, but this is the fine and rare, and it's the one from 2016. Cuz you got you have to look at the date on cuz they did this is the third release. They did different dates on all that. Uh, just, it's a Honduran. I, uh, Alec you Bradley and uses, Mr. K say a lot about the Honduran. I've, I've had Honduran that was really good, and I don't know if it's just from where they're pulling it from. I'm just not a fan of it. Hmm. And Alec Bradley uses a lot of Honduran. So, I had my session with Mr. K this week, and during our session, he was enjoying a nice cigar from... Um, Bet he was. The warm, beautiful weather in Florida. Um, you'll never guess what he was smoking. An Opus? The Rocky Patel ALR. He said he was excited to try that one. That's why I, s I sent him down with some, like, uh, just a few cigars I wanted yeah. him to try. ALR was one of them. In 60 went down, too. In typical Mr. K fashion, he said it's a good everyday stick. Oh, good. Which, to me, that means he likes it. Mm -hmm. Well, he he's the one that turned me on to this one. He said this was a good everyday stick. Okay, so Mr. K, obviously we've, we've joked about it. It's true. And he's got deeper pockets than all of us. And he has no problem purchasing what he likes. However, what he likes gets very expensive. So if you smoke a $30, $40, $50, $60 cigar every day, it shit adds up. I'll be bankrupt by July. <laughs> I'm just saying. So he also searches for good everyday sticks that don't break your pocket. This is one of them. 
The ALR is another. The, the 60 that Rocky put out, the shit, the Disciple, all of those are good everyday cigars. You know that that Milanio, the V Milanio that went number one, that's like $11.50 cigar. I think it's fantastic. What were you going to say? Uh, <clears throat> one of the cigars that I don't think he has actually tried yet, which is surprising, is the Rocky Tail White Label. I've actually been meaning to go grab another one. Yo, those, grab me dude, one too. Great. Grab me one too. I haven't had one yet. They're awesome. He's been rubbing it in my face. <sighs> he, I think he's become more open to trying new things since him and I have started hanging around years ago and, and smoking cigars because he's set in his ways of what he likes. It, 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 his palate knows what it wants. He has tried a few more and he will try what I give him. He's not always enjoying what I give him. Like, uh, I had him try that CAO Nicaraguan. I don't remember what he said about it. I thought it was a good everyday cigar, and it was given a rating of a 92. It's a good every say. Every, uh, oh, uh, what? what? Uh, Sorry, I good. Not channeled only one. my inner Johnny there for a second. <laughs> um, to me, that CAO Nicaraguan, I wouldn't even say that's a good everyday steak by our standards. Uh, we were classifying that one as a golf stick. It's a golf stick. stick. It's. it's Tasty enough to enjoy, but disposable if it needs to be. And that's what we mean by everyday, or a, a, a golf stick, or what Mr. K would call uh, like a fishing stick. I call I call them functioning sticks. When well, you're doing we, something. we all have our, our terms for them, but when when muffins and I call it a golf stick, if you're out, okay, so we go golfing. We're out on a golf course. I got my stogie in my mouth, and I'm like, you know, I'm getting pissed off. I'm getting ready to swing. I don't want to say that. If it falls out and it gets wet and it ruins, I'm not worried about it. I'm worried about it because someone took, you know, a lot of effort to make this thing, but I'm not worried about it because it didn't break the bank. Yeah. The CAO Nicaraguan's a $6.25 stick. I drop it. I'm going to pull another one out. I go golfing with, I'm not going to smoke them all, but I go golfing with several cigars just in case I drop one. But you ain't going to catch me taking no Opus out there. Hey, I'm not man. taking a Padron out there with me. Because if I do, I'm sitting on whatever hole I light it on until it's finished. And then I'll go to the next hole. Go ahead. Keep oh. y y yicking your yips a little bit. Do it again. A light leather tones. Um, like a peanut. Old classic peanuts. Like planters? Yeah. Well, right to shell classic peanuts. Oh, so circus peanuts. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I get the leather. I got a little bit of black pepper. You get black black pepper? I got a little black pepper. I, actually, I still have a little bit. I can taste it in the back of, back of my tongue. And baker's chocolate. I'm getting uh, a little bit of uh, like white vinegar as well. White vinegar? Yeah, it's definitely got like a vinegar. So it's got a tongue. zing to it. Mm -hmm. I never got that. White vinegar. That is interesting. I'm glad just, you said that just because I've never I've never got that before. I mean, just to say, three of us all are tasting different notes. I would also like to mention that I started mine during the setup process for the episode. Oh, yeah. And you're already, I am, you're I in am, the final third right I now. I am down to a little nub at this point. <laughs> Did you get out your dagger yet? That is probably three or four minutes from now. Speaking of nub, I know I talked about it earlier. Did I say it on camera? No. I tried the nub. Okay, well, we, we've had nubs before. Yeah. The Oliva V Milanio came out with a nub. I finally got to try it today. And it, although it had that flavor, it didn't have that flavor. It wasn't all there. It was like a, a, a mild mm. version of it. I'm, I'm going to say it's because it was such a big ring gauge. I was just about to say, do you think it's because of the, of the ring gauge? It's my working theory. I've noticed over time, and, and actually the shape of it too, like you know, a 60 box press tastes different than a 60 regular. Yeah. Okay? I'm not a fan of huge ring gauges, but I am a fan of the 60s when they're box press. Like, remember that ALR, that first ALR you had? That was a 6x60 six box press. And it was great. You know, I'm sure it had something to do with the environment, uh, the fact that we had gone golfing that day. Yeah. Good, good, good Saturday. 
you know, at at the cigar lounge. Shout out to Penn, Ohio. Yep, Georgie down at Penn, Ohio. Uh, it was a nice, beautiful, sunny day. Just the right amount of breeze in 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 beautiful downtown Sharon, Pennsylvania. That is still to this day, I think, the best ALR I have smoked. Did you get paid to say all that? I wish. <laughs> hey, George, hit me up. <laughs> We, we do love George down in Penn, Ohio. There's a, actually, you know what? Bobby down in Volant. Yeah. I like going down to his. His is a real, it's small. It's really cool, though. Bo- at Boxcar. Um, literally turned a boxcar train into a scar lounge. Thought that was cool as shit. Their and, distillery has really good stuff, too. Mm-hmm. And they bring that over to the lounge itself. Faux free. Mm. And Joe out of Slippery Rock Cigars. Yep. That's a weird place, though. I've never got to take you out there yet. Yeah, it's, Joe's place, like, once you get inside, you feel like you're almost at home. But, like... Because it's literally in an apartment building. Yeah, like, when you get there, though, you're like, is this really a, a cigar shop? And then you get in, you're like, he, he, great selection, it's very friendly, and it's an at-home feeling. It is, it's nice. Yep. It's nice. But getting back to Ring Gauge, you know I like the Asylum 13. I do. I had the Asylum 13 in an 80 gauge. Yeah, somebody's forearm. There's a mouse right there. Where? Right there, right above the blower. On oh, the on the him. blower. Little mouse. <laughs> Come here, buddy. Come on camera. <laughs> I got Remy in here. Yep. <laughs> I, he- fact, I heard it. I didn't know yeah. what it was. The, the fact that you even knew that reference blows my mind. I was a chef for 20 years. Of course I know Ratatouille. Yeah, but you are not a Disney kind of person. You are not a Disney kind of That's not guy. Disney. That was Pixar. And that's what I'm going with. I'm sorry, who owns Pixar? Pixar. Disney. Thank you. And that's what I'm going with. Where'd he go? He's over there by your treadmill. Fine, it's a meal if you don't want the Remy reference. <laughs> no, I'm not complaining about the reference. I'm just like, <sighs> like so mind blown that you even knew what that meant. But like I was saying about the Silent 1380 gauge, I actually prefer it in the 80 gauge over like a Robusto or the, even a Churchill. That's how round that fucking thing is. Yeah, it's... I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. I was focused on him. Can you... Uh... It's how round that thing is. And, and, and what would that look like if you were to smoke it? Like... Shaq's forearm. I was waiting for you to. <laughs> it ain't. It ain't <laughs> happening, brother. Yeah, it's. I would say it is a little awkward smoking it, but from because I keep them in a few different sizes, and smoking it in the 80 gauge, I actually prefer the taste from it, and it's. It's almost like two different cigars. Well, that brings us back to what we talked about before. I think it was last season where ring gauges almost create an entirely different cigar. I, I don't like that it does that because, and, and you got and you got to be careful. Like if you're trying to track down the number one, you'll know because it has a little sticker on it after it goes number one. Yeah. But like the, uh, the AVO, what the hell am I thinking? Aging Room. The uh, Aging Room Nicaraguan that went number one, the Torpedo went number one, Box Press Torpedo. Yeah. But they sell it in other gauges. And other, uh, and other sizes. Those didn't go number one. That one went number one. So for the, for the people who actually try to track these things down, because it went number one, I got to have it, you got to get the right one. Yeah, you got to make sure you get the right size. But I've, uh, I've also noticed that you can get the same ring gauge, but your length, the only thing I've noticed that it changes is as you get through it, the flavors you get either get more bold as as they go on, unless you're smoking like a Padron or something, then it's single profile, and you get it's almost exactly the same from the time you light it till you're done. Now, <clears throat> something like this, if we had an extra inch on here, it, it'd be different. It <clears throat> it would be the same flavor up until we get further into it, and the the further you get into it, the more bold it would get. You know, Asylum came out with a 9 by 90 That was supposed to be an April Fool's joke. It's not. People And love then it. everybody raves so much about it 
that they actually made it. I'm pretty sure they released that at the uh, the thing in Vegas, and that was supposed to be the joke. People love it. People buy. You know, I'm gonna tell you the only reason I would buy that is to put on like a shelf. It comes in its like own I would special box. Like too. I would lacquer it so it's like bronzing something. Yeah. I would lacquer it and put it on the shelf, and then down the line when it became hard as a rock, I'd use it as a billy club. I fuck someone up with it. Like, how would you feel if you got beat to death with a cigar? <laughs> a nine by ninety at that. <laughs> a nine by ninety. Yeah, it, yeah. It even comes in its own special box, and you can only get one in a box. Yeah, but that's how you know. Uh, different class of person here. I got a lot of much less violent things going through my mind, but still not great. I'm not violent. He's not violent. <laughs> I'm not violent. I'm just very gay, is all I'm going to say. We know. Yeah, we all can be we, happy. We love the gays. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. You know, fun fact, he was actually my first gay friend. I remember, I remember coming home after meeting him. I told, I told my wife, I was like, yeah, I went and hung out with this guy named Dustin who was hanging out with like all, all of us, you know, the band crew at the time. And... Uh, and she goes, and I'm like, he's gay. And she goes, and I'm like, <laughs> it's something. I, and she goes, don't do that. Don't be, because you know I'm. I was working towards not thinking like that anymore because you know we all we all have a past. I admit it. I have a past. I thought like an asshole. Um, but you know we can all change. Well, I was in the process of changing, and that's the one. The one thing, if I could say anything about living in Vegas, it took me from what I knew living here, and it open the doors to the world. So I'm glad I went out there. I'm glad I was able to learn and see and became with friends that uh, became friends with people that quite honestly, I would have never become friends with back here. Him being one of them. Well, we're in the second third. What are you tasting now? I'm more curious what he tasted in a sec because he's the one that came up with white vinegar. Yeah, I don't know how you got white vinegar, but uh, it's... This has been a steady profile. I'm getting the the classic peanuts, a light leather. Here's my thing, and it's it's awkward that it's happening because you don't normally get that in something that's this bold. The leather turned creamy. The chocolate kind of subsided a little bit, and I picked up some figs. See, I'm getting like Baker's chocolate now. Or like really, pure, you didn't get that earlier? No, it's like a pure cocoa, though. Like that's not co- Baker's chocolate. Like the, that's Baker's I'm getting cocoa. A, yeah, I'm getting like the, the powder. Yeah, the powder shit. The, uh, that pepper went away. I didn't get that anymore. It's funny how you, that pepper goes in and out. Yeah. I'll tell you. I can handle a little bit of pepper, but. You remember them Partagas 1845s that damn near choked us? That wasn't even black pe- That was straight up cayenne. No, that was like smoking a fucking jalapeno. <laughs> on a, in a stick. Not on a stick, are you in making, a stick. Are you making a Jeff, a Jeff Dunham reference? Yes. We <laughs> love Jeff Dunham, by the way. I love Jeff Dunham. Yeah, he's... What is this, 2006? It could be. If it was, my body would feel better because I'd be younger. Screw, screw that. <laughs> No, I'm like um, really struggling. Like, what fucking year are we in? I don't know. Well, you don't you don't spend time on social media. I don't know if you do or not. But uh, they just announced a new like festival show taking place in Vegas, um, and it is literally all of the like emo bands that were popular in the early 2000s. AFI. AFI is on the docket. Really? Yes. My Chemical Romance, Alkaline Trio, like all of these like old emo bands. I'm literally sitting here like, is it 2006? And old? I just missed something. It hurts when you say it like that. that all these old. That just tells you that 10 years ago was better. <laughs> I could go with that. I mean, I, I what know. What is like the equivalent of, I don't know, my Chemical Romance today. As far as what? Sound? Popularity? I mean, well, I think the, I mean, that music, genre. music changes with the times, right? I mean, that was early 2000. That's like looking at the difference between disco and new wave from the 80s. Like, music changes. Music evolves. Yeah, yeah new, new wave was disco with a twist. We don't, we don't have those emo bands in 2022 like we did in the early 2000s because music has evolved. 
I think there's there's a few staples like like rock is a staple. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have Metallica is a great example. They came up in the '80s, right? There there are bands that will withstand the test of time. Metallica is one of them. Pantera, even though two of the greats are gone, uh, that will withstand the test of time. Hell, there's another one. A lot of I mean, if I say it, you'll you'll agree. But a lot of people don't think of them. Disturbed. Disturbed, Disturbed was great, I and they Disturbed. was still is. It, is. Yeah. I mean, will they will withstand the test of time because they had a sound. Yeah, that's just like there's one band that I literally can listen to any one of their albums, any one of their songs. Def Leppard. That's you. That's me. Lincoln yeah. Park. Oh yeah, yeah, Lincoln Park. I'm system to the down. I, I, go, I, I, I can agree literally with that. listen to every one, and they're the only band. That I can literally just put their music on. I can listen to it all day. I agree. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, uh, so I actually get made fun of for a lot for this. Um, I when I listen to music, <laughs> I I exclusively use playlists. Yeah. I don't I don't go to artists. I don't <laughs> I don't look up certain specific albums. Uh, when I find an artist that I like, I create a playlist of their entire discography. Uh, System of Down is one of them. I'll just throw it on shuffle and let it play till it's done. System of the Down, all their albums and song is the only Pacific playlist that I have. I only have Pacific. one. Pacific. Well, I like the Atlantic playlist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Here Thank we you. fucking go. <laughs> Thank you. But I literally have only ever made one playlist, and it's nothing but System of the Down. Yeah. Yeah. You know what's funny about System of the Down and just, I guess, kind of the uh, environment that we live in and we, we, you know, make for ourselves as we're hanging out is very – uh, non-political. I mean, sometimes we'll get into conversations. Sometimes it goes but, there. You know, we, we try to keep it very non-religious, non-political. That's all System of a Down is. Every single <coughs> song that they have is political. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we do, especially when you're in the, o and you know, being in the Oasis, when I created that environment, it was supposed to be an environment that when you sit down at that table, you're surrounded by green, you've got palm trees, you are chilling. Don't be bringing that hateful, negative politics to my table. Him and I have done that a couple times, but we, we try not to do that. We've had a few, We've had a few. Uh, political conversations. You know who is also another good band that's extremely local to us? Donnie Iris. Nine Inch Nails. Kurt Reznor went to Mercer. I know. He graduated the year I was born. My Aunt Denise, <laughs> You're old. My Aunt Denise <laughs> used to do his homework. Jesus. Trent Reznor. Mm -hmm. I'm actually not a fan of Nine Inch Nails. I am a fan, however, of what Trent can do. That's uh, that's how I feel about Foo Fighters. Not not yeah. a not a big fan of Foo Fighters. Huge fan of D Dave Grohl. Yeah, Dave Grohl. He's he's something. He is something. But you know that just goes to show you all this talk about music now on a cigar show of all things. It's a time, a place, and an emotion. That's exactly what cigars are. It's why I love cigars so much, because you create a time, a place, and an emotion. You're sitting yeah. outside. It's beautiful. It's sunshine. You open up your humidor, or in my case, humidors, and you How go. How many are you up to now? <laughs> I have 17 humidors now. Holy fuck. But For you record, I have two. I barely have $17. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you, you open up your humidors, and you go, okay, what am I feeling today? It's 78 degrees, the sun's shining, there's a, a slight gust of wind going on. I want to pull this one out. And then you create a memory. So when that day comes around again and you want to emulate that, you think back to that and you go from there. So that's the same thing with, with music. I, I've got, you, you talked about playlists. I've got different playlists for every mood I could possibly be in. And I find myself listening to jazz a lot because I get pissed off a lot. And jazz calms me down. I thought I listened to a lot of different genres because I can go from listening to like ICP to ICP, wow. fucking Black Sabbath. I'll <clears throat> I've been in your car, and one song will be something from your band, and the next song is jazz, and then it changes to something totally different. Yeah, Cuban. I'll music. get Whiplash riding in the car with him because his it's it's crazy crazy i love music i i have no no qualms about saying this i've got britney spears in my playlist i've got christina 
Man, Chris, you been talking about bad bitch. That girl's <laughs> voice, holy shit. And yes, I'm leaving that in there because that's what she is. That girl is bad. The range she can have. I've got all that stuff in my playlist. No, we, uh, <laughs> you won't understand this sentence, but we stand Brittany. We stand Brittany. I, I, I sit Brittany. I don't know what, what we're talking about, but okay. Cool. We stand. Did you, uh, did you see the news? I don't watch the news. No. She's she's free. Free of what? Her uh herpes. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. No. Uh what well, was I like it? Brittany. Come on now. I'm forgetting the exact term, but she had like some legal contract with her dad. Oh. I mean, if I want to think back that far, yeah, that girl got royally screwed by her own family for years. They fi- finally let the let the leash go. Yeah. What an <laughs> asshole. Like, how, how do you take control over somebody like that, especially your own daughter? Family gets you first. Conservatorship. Always. She had a conservatorship with her father. There was a whole legal battle, and the internet was ablaze. Hashtag free Britney, and she's free for the first time since, what, 2007 when she had her meltdown? Oh, she, is that when she shaved her head? Yep. She is free. She can make whatever she wants. Whenever she wants, she can do whatever she wants. She can spend her own money however she wants. It was just her dad that did that? Uh, I don't want to say yes or no and speak incorrectly, but I believe. Here's where I'll, I'll leave that conversation in. You should be fucking ashamed of yourself. Plain and simple. The things you talk about when you're smoking a cigar. Well, that's actually kind of like the most violent I've got having a cigar because that shit irritates me. I don't like being you told what to it. do. No, I'm serious. <laughs> you, know, you know me, dude. I don't like being told what to do. Like, you do you, I'll do me, you do you. We leave ev- I leave everybody alone. Do what makes you happy. Now, imagine you work hard and you make your money and somebody else tells you that you cannot spend it. Well, you know, we'll, ha- we'll have to bleep out everything I have to say about that. <laughs> Anyway, back to the cigar, because you're going to get me riled up. Uh, did you finally get your banding off there? Yes. Okay. I, I actually just figured out uh, another use for my cigar dagger. Yeah, to cut it off. Let uh, me tell you something. I love these cigars. I love all Avos. But you need to stop putting so much glue on that shit. Shit, who makes AVO? Now? David off. David off. Stop using so much glue, bro. I'm tired of almost breaking these things, trying to get these bands off. The, the theory. I be- literally almost poked a hole in my cigar trying to get the band off. T- the theory behind it is you don't take these off until they're ready to come off. Okay, we all know that. Even newbies know that. You, as it heats up, as it's coming down, it's supposed to loosen the glue so you can you know, move it and slide it off. Do, it ain't moving, dude. I'm about to smoke the banding with it. Glue. Too I much li- glue. I'm sorry, I how, literally how have an indentation from the band. Can you, can you do band. that motion again? Yeah, thanks. <laughs> Appreciate it. It's Appreciate about that. what you need to get that thing off there. <laughs> like one side. One side is loose. The other one's not. The mine was tight all the time. Oh, my God. Nope, nope. I'm smoking the band with it. I, <laughs> I'm not ripping my cigar. I used it to, to peel up the, the one corner to be able to pop it off. Shit irritates the hell out of me. I thought it was only on the... Meanwhile... I, every <sighs> AVO... Or what the fuck is it? How Meanwhile, is it Avo. Mine, Avo. mine just slid off. Mine is still fully glued together in a oh. ring, Ooh. but... Ah, that's what you got to do. You got to heat the side up with your lighter. Loosen the glue. There we go. Now we got it off. Stop doing that. Had a fun holy, day. Holy <laughs> shit, it actually burned on the inside. Listen, all I'm saying is there is no such thing as perfection. I don't think I've ever tasted this in a cigar, and I don't know if I like it. I'm tasting like dirty shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that last hit was like. Where's your tongue been? We'll discuss this at another time. <laughs> Listen, don't ask the questions you don't want the answers to. Unless you want the answers. I'm fucked up, dude. I don't care. I, you tell me anything. When I first got my cigar dagger, remember, I had like a half a cigar. And it was... Yeah, it looked like a Lincoln log <laughs> hanging off his dagger. I was so excited to use it. These things are awesome. I do, I do enjoy mine. 
My one. You know, I like to collect shit. I only have one of these. You I'm know, surprised I, you haven't gotten another personal one. I find that absolutely hilarious. The fact that I have more than you do. Oh. And you're the daily cigar smoker, and I'm not. I mean, I have my older ones. They're not from Cigar Dagger. They're just my old pokers. But, yeah, I only have one of these. How does your cigar taste? Mine's fantastic. Mine tastes like a dirty shoe. Still? Yeah. That's disappointing. I hope it goes away. Well, it ain't going away yet. I mean, I know we asked this question earlier, but jokes aside, where the fuck has your tongue been? Well, I didn't taste it before I started smoking this cigar, so. No, it, it, it was like maybe a quarter inch ago is when he said that. And it was, I've never had one turn into a shoe. I've had, I've had them turn bad, like ashy or something like that, but never a shoe. Yeah. Mm, that last one wasn't too bad. One interesting thing I picked up in here is not a dirty shoe. <laughs> raisins. I got a little raisin. I'm getting in my, down to my, in my final third year tasting dirt uh, <laughs> which is surprising because of any of the other cigars that i've had i want to bring up one in particular because I, I did this last season i would pull out ones out of these books and actually tell people like go check this one out here's one that i think is very underrated and it's the esteban carreras and i know you're a huge fan of it that uh, chupacabra I think yes it is. i have a few of those one i want to bring up is the 10 year I haven't had the 10 years. I have. Diez años. Or anos, if you're pronouncing it. I'm not even going to try. That was a fantastic one. Esteban Carreras actually had... That Chupacabra was fantastic. Yes. I actually really liked that. And I had never heard of that one before. And you can actually get those down at Penn, Ohio. Down in Sharon. <laughs> like they know. Penn, Ohio. Down in Sharon. But that's where I'm going to leave Somewhere it. Somewhere you can get it at Penn, Ohio. <laughs> that's where I'm going to leave it. And I'll pull out a new one. One more for the community. Oh, here's one. I know I've seen those. I am not a fan of the Oscar, the, like the Leaf by Oscar. But I am a fan of the 2012 by Oscar. I've seen them. Not so much the original, the red label. It was the green label, I think. Yep, the broccoli green label. I like that one. Check that one out if you have an opportunity and look for Oscar or uh, Esteban Carreras. That's also a fantastic stick. As for this one, I'm a huge fan of the uh, Avo Synchro Nicaraguan. Great everyday smoke, good flavors, except for the shoes. I've had this cigar several times and it's never turned on me like that. It happens sometimes. So I'm not happens. I'm not going to dock points on this cigar. I would smoke it again. In a heartbeat. Yeah. And I was actually excited when I come in and realized this is what we were smoking tonight. Until now. But the next one will be good. And the one thing I will say, it is Mr. K approved. And as you hear more often, Mr. K, mean, you know, his, his word means a lot to the three of us. Uh, and if it's approved by him... It's definitely worth trying. So try this one if you have a chance. Try those 2012s by Oscar. Actually, you know what? Just smoke everything because cigars are, are meant to, to make you happy and enjoy. Just don't smoke a Philly. <laughs> or a Black and Mild. Or a Black and Mild, you fool. It's not a fucking cigar. Exactly. So stop smoking them. Anyway, everyone, enjoy your smokes. <laughs> we'll see you next time.